Welcome to Nation RG here with my another video. My short story. Velisca Warrior 2. Just to give a briefing of why I'm writing this story. And dues of the past what two months? We had like three or four cases of child molestation. Or child abuse. And. I mean just like everybody else. That despises this kind of stuff. And cannot stomach. What I see on the news. Teachers at that. Even like a couple maybe. Teachers. On the news, three teachers. And the other one's on these dating sites or whatever web pages. And it goes on and on and on. You think they have the brains, the. But they don't. No brains. Nobody thinks they're ever gonna get caught. But then again, what does that matter? Because <laughs> sometimes they just get out. And like I say in my other video, and I like to say it again. <laughs> I mean, I write these stories because I know I'd never get away with bloody murder. But they can't stop me from writing it. And I swear to God, if I was ever left in charge of these people, this is what I would do to them. What I write is what I want to do. And it's the God's honest truth. Even though I don't believe in God, but hey. But I mean, just to think, you know, just like that Amber Alert that happened. Uncle taking a niece shopping in the store for little skimpy bikini suits and all this. I read, you know, I, I read what I could. About that case. And I'm thankful that. You know. And that's what's good thing about today's technology. You shit that shit a fire on the internet. Or on the web. Or. All on TV. Bam. Social media. Boom. Picks it right up. Where you got to go. And that's what we need these days. You know. People sit there and talk about the government being up your ass and shit. Well hey. You got nothing to hide. You shouldn't worry about what's tracked on your phone. But just to see these poor little kids, I mean, they're defenseless. Just, yeah. But this is what I'd like to do. Now this is part two. <clears throat> so like I say, the best way to get my stories... Oh, and I would like to also mention also that I wrote what I could stomach of what a child molester would do, of what I think they would do, and what I catch on the news, or in stories, or what I read about. So, I mean, I put detail in there. And I mean, that's what makes me thrive more to write my story. Just because of the sick, demented thoughts that these people got. It's people like this that make me have these sick, demented thoughts. And, I mean, I would love nothing more but to do what I write. But I can't. Of course, you'd go to jail for stuff like that. And, oh, you can't kill other humans. And you would just be sinking to their level, but... You know what? Give me a break. You know what I think? I think if we passed a law stating that if without a reasonable doubt and if these cases are 100%, 100% sure 
that someone is doing this crap with children, whether it be beating the crap out of them, breaking bones, you know, leaving them bruised, bloody, and beat them to death or rape them as a child and, you know, doing sexual acts and, you know what, this person should come to people like me. <laughs> That's what I think. In this story right here, perfect example of what I was doing. I just put a little twist in it. A few ifs, ands, and buts. But this is as close as you're going to get as to what I want to do to these child molesters and abusers. I mean, I'm tough on my kids. Don't get me wrong. I show them tough love due to the fact that people like this. You can't have your kids in this world of society being soft. Not having a defense mechanism placed as in, whoa, wait, don't. You know, you need to give tough love to kids. You just can't be baby pampering or, you know, always giving them the, what do they call it? Helicopter mom effect or father, helicopter father effect, be all over them. You can't do that, especially in these times where I think that child molesting and abusing is just getting worse. Why? Because people get away with it. And just in the past two years, you've seen all oh, babies killed, babies dropped off, babies beaten to death. Oh, we're just, do they're just doing what they want because they see this other asshole getting away with it and it's sick. Or if they go to jail, they get some short time and then they get back out. I'll tell you something, I'll say it a million times until I'm blue in the face. You put a child abuser or a child molester in jail. They're not going to get better. They stay the same. Want to know why? You, you listen to a man that's been on the other side of the walls. You want to know why they don't get better? Because they're in a room with their roommate that has done the same thing as they've done. What do you think they're doing in that room? Think about it. I know when I sat in the room for what I'd done. Not that I really wanted to. But due to the people that I was with in jail, talk, 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 because they're so bored, bored, bored. And, whoa, I got a new roommate. They want to talk your ear off about what they did and how they're innocent and how this happened and that happened. And then you're getting into your story of why you're here. And what do you think them child molesters do? That's why they're not in what they call population. Because they're sitting in behind the walls with the people like themselves. That don't make them better. That makes them more, getting more, you know, ripping and thriving to get back out. Because they're just going to go do it again because they're talking to each other about it. And they're getting each other worked up and it's fucking sick. I know I was told when I was in jail, which I had no problem with, but dude, it was my first bid. People got to tell you things. And due to the people liking me so much, you know, hey, I ain't gonna go in there and battle out the world and say, hey, I'm boss. But you do gotta learn things, and the one jailhouse rule is if you end up in the bedroom as a roommate with one of them child molesters, I'll tell you a secret. If you don't bang them out, you get banged out with them. Jailhouse rule. So I say, don't have no problem with it. But do that I'm outside and I got kids and I gotta try and not think of my kids ever having to have this happen to them. Because oh, there's no telling what I'd do. But never know. Maybe the law will pass and I'll be one of them judge, juries, and executioners. I can dream, right? <laughs> anyway, let's get back into this story of part two. When I read and narrate my stories, I tell people to shut the lights down, relax, and let your imagination run wild. I mean, like I said, I do go into a little bit of detail, do because of what I've read about, what I've heard about, and yeah, it does need to be known in stories. Because some people just overlook it like idiots. 
morons. They ain't doing that. You know, you got them people that say they don't do that to kids. See, I would never imagine my my people doing that. And they sit there, you see them on these TV shows, you see, he ain't never done that. And sometimes, like on the Steve Wilco show, you got people walking off the stage with a real child molester just failed a ch uh, fucking lie detector test and the person still falling. Well, he never did that, yeah. So this stuff like this has got to be written and you got to have a mind and a... Turns my stomach, but hey, it's got to happen. Some people are blind to this shit. That's why they let them out when they're on a jury duty. Anyways, part two. As a few weeks went by, Pete was not now in and out of work, slacking on the case. Dan was getting to the point he was done working with the with Pete. Every time the chief would ask for Pete or talk of him, Dan would say, I'll see what's going on, chief. <clears throat> Dan was now doing drive arounds, more missing cases, but no bodies or checkings. Shit was getting stressful, and the commissioner was breathing down everyone's neck. Then Dan stumbled upon the pickup, the limo, sitting in the abandoned parking lot. This time, three men got in the car and drove off. Curious Dan followed, then drove deep into the woods. And chills ran down Dan's back. Started to feel the evil of what? Something. It grew on him as he pulled up to the gate of a of no return. Dan pulled in fast as the huge gate doors closed and slammed shut. Dan jumped in his seat. As he turned and looked in the rearview mirror, he pulled quickly in some bushes and shut his car off, taking a deep breath and continued off to the huge, massive building before him, amazed and in fear of the elegant but also demonic-looking structure, that he could hear the sounds of children laughing and sounds of disturbing pleasure moans. He watched the limo stop at the front steps. The three men walked up the stairs, laughing. Their own selves, high-fiving, and heard one man said, say, an awesome night awaits. The driver drove off to another part of the massive estate. Then Dan ran to the front door and waited a few. As soon as it was clear, doors closed, Dan would have not thought this would be his last night on earth. As the three men walked into the huge foyer, signs of where to go led their men upstairs and down long hallways then signs and loud moans of young children filled and echoed the halls. Finally, a sign said, Get your hard cocks ready for your wildest pleasure. As three men whipped off their pants, then started to walk toward the door that would soon open to their dirtiest desires, they quickly opened the door the loud noises roared with young voices of sexual desire. Then their eyes bugged out of the to a sight never seen by man since the 16th century. Dan started wondering, no, wandering, excuse me, the halls of the first floor with an eerie feeling that made him feel sick. Emotional, insane, sad. 
He was like on a merry-go-round, just like in Peter's apartment. Dan started a again with what the fuck. He was looking around before following the signs and in the distance he heard the sounds of sexual sensation. And it began to turn Dan's stomach while walking down a hall. And following the moans and yelling of some sick, twisted mess going on, he stopped at the room, at a room, to the right, to see a figure jumping and hopping like a maniac. Then Dan went to walk in towards it, and it disappeared. Dan could not com comprehend what this place was. His mind was just over the over the place, excuse me, all over the place, and was these three men here, and why was there sounds of an orgy going on? Dan pulled out his phone and searched the address he wrote down when he was taking notes, and to a shock, Dan spoke out loud of, holy fuck. What is going on? As the three men stood there with their pants completely off, half naked, they stopped dead in their tracks, eyes wide open in surprise of what they saw. But tonight it wasn't a room full of child pornography. Tonight was the dance of the Velisca warrior. White man once said, and so the other Indian tribes who not dare step foot in to battlefield with these insane killer engines that they were the worst than the devil himself. This tribe always went to the extreme of a good sculpting and skinning of the skin of the white man. Trophies hung high in the woods after a victory. But what people didn't know is that this tribe wasn't killing for fun or land. They witnessed something that was abnormal since the day they first saw it with their own eye. And, it, and just like today, the rape of a child was just as serious as today, but back then in them days, stuff was hidden in the closet. And when the Velisca tribe walked in on the white man doing this, Indians say this was what brought the insanity. And when Indians brought it up to the white man in charge, he said, you are making this up. The praying Indians who took the white man religion, was labeled as rotting souls. Their spirits were now soiled as they too began taking young ones. The Velisca tribe began their rampage, making tribes either join them or die. It took a long, a long time to regain control of this problem of raping seemed to have disappeared. But here we are. And here we and here were three perverted scumbags. But now Pete stood up, did an Indian chant, war paint spread across his face, moccasins upon his feet, leather pants and the warrior headset with black feathers representing death. A fire roared, roared in front of, his, of Pete as he began his war dance of hiya, 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 hiya. Long, loud demonic cries of calls echoed throughout the halls of the huge abandoned building. The three men looked with fear 
And in a trance, one man said, Get your pants. Let's get the fuck out. As they scrambled to get their pants on, falling, screaming at each other, telling one another to move. Dan shaking his head and now telling himself, I should have left it alone. The chief still repeating in his head, don't come in here with your fucking gung-ho, I'm going to save the world, bullshit. Over and over, the screams of the men and Pete, just filled the air. Dan started to run to the front door, but no sooner did the war dance begin, the asylum went into lockdown. It was impossible to leave the steel doors and windows that covered everything. The three men were on their way to the front door, banging on it and screaming help. Pete's Indian rants were getting close but then stopped. Dead silence filled the air. The men took deep breaths and looked at one another. One said, let's put ourselves together, pull ourselves together. Three of us, one of him. Let's find some weapons. And table legs is what they chose. They began their journey to find a way out or kill their unholy host. That's in the part two. The Velisca Warrior. And as you can see, <laughs> putting things together these days and making a little creation with myself, but you know what? There's nothing more in the world is what I'd love to be doing right now with this story. Maybe it would take that one moment in time and life and the law. Maybe with these motherfucking perverts who put their peckers in their pants, huh? Maybe the thought of little children would just seep out of them. Maybe they would just go touch each other, <laughs> whatever it may be. All I know is, is this is what came in my head in the past two weeks. Still got more to go here. I'm not even done with this story yet, boy. <laughs> I still got a long way to go with this, and it's just flooding out of my head, you know? But anyways, YouTube Nation. Till part three. The Velisca Warrior says, well, I can't say that. <laughs> Till part three of the Velisca Warrior. Many more videos to come. I am out.